tutorial is going to focus on the multi-store model of memory by Atkinson and Schifrin. There are three parts to the multi-store model, sensory memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. It focuses on the structure of memory rather than on the processes of how memory works and it suggests that information passes between the stores in a linear way which means it progresses from sensory to short-term and then to long-term memory in linear order. Information is passed from short-term to long-term memory by rehearsal. Sensory memory can be seen as a short duration store. It encodes mainly visual information, an iconic store, and auditory information, or the echoic store. Supporting evidence for sensory memory comes from Sperling, who tested the capacity and duration of sensory memory. He showed participants a grid of numbers and letters for less than a second. He found that participants recalled an average of four items from the grid, and that information decays within about two seconds. If we pay attention to information from sensory memory, it can transfer to our short-term memory. This is where information is stored for up to 30 seconds. Information received from the sensory memory is stored temporarily in short-term memory. There are a number of studies which support the different characteristics of short-term memory. Encoding in short-term memory is thought to be mainly acoustic. To demonstrate this, Conrad visually presented participants with letters one at a time. Letters which were acoustically similar, such as D, P, T or E, were harder to recall than letters which were acoustically dissimilar, such as W, M, R and A. This suggests that short-term memory encodes information acoustically, or as sounds, even if the information is initially presented visually. Short-term memory also has a very limited capacity. In 1887, Jacobs experimented with the capacity of short-term memory by presenting participants with increasingly longer lists of numbers, called the digit span technique. He found that people could remember a maximum of nine items. Miller later reviewed studies on the capacity of short-term memory and concluded that the capacity is the magic number seven plus or minus two, e.g. between five and nine items. This can be increased by chunking. Short-term memory has a limited duration of up to about 30 seconds. To study this, Peterson and Peterson read nonsense trigrams to participants and then asked them to count backwards in threes from a large number for between 3 and 18 seconds. This was to prevent them from being able to rehearse the information. Participants were able to recall 90% of the trigrams after 3 seconds, but only 5% after 18 seconds. This demonstrates that the duration of short-term memory is between about 20 and 30 seconds. A process of maintenance rehearsal is used to keep information topped up in short-term memory. If we rehearse something elaboratively, that information can then pass into our long-term memory store. This is where information is stored for longer than 30 seconds. And there are thought to be different types of long-term memory, such as memory for events or memory for performing tasks. There are also studies which support the different characteristics of long-term memory. Long-term memory encodes semantically by meaning, although it can also encode visually and acoustically. Badly presented participants with one of four word lists. Acoustically similar or acoustically dissimilar, semantically similar or semantically dissimilar. Participants then conducted a distractor task for 20 minutes before the recall. He found that recall for semantically similar words was 55%, whereas recall for other word lists was between 70 and 85%. This semantic confusion shows that long-term memory encodes information semantically. The capacity of long-term memory is potentially unlimited and has mainly been studied using diary techniques. 
For example, Linton created a diary over the course of six years, which detailed 5,500 personal events. Every month she tested herself for recognition of these events, and that she was able to accurately recall the details of dates for events. This suggests that the capacity of long-term memory is very large. Potentially, information in long-term memory could last for a lifetime, but it's thought that skill-based information may last longer than facts. Barrick used 400 participants aged between 17 and 74 years. He showed participants photographs and lists of names, some of which were high, high school classmates. Participants who'd left high school in the last 15 years were able to recall 90% of faces and names, and participants who'd left high school 48 years ago could recall 80% of names and 70% of faces. This suggests that we have a lasting long-term memory, particularly for faces. Now we've looked at an overview of Atkinson and Schifrin's model, let's have a look at some strengths and weaknesses of the model. One of the first strengths was that the multi-store model was very influential and has prompted a great deal of further research into memory. It's also paved the way for later memory models, such as the working memory model by Badley and Hitch. The case study of Clive Wearing supports the multi-store model as well. Clive's short-term memory was damaged as a result of illness, but much of his long-term memory remains intact. This supports the existence of separate memory stores for short-term and long-term memory. More supporting evidence comes from the serial position effect. Words from the beginning of a list are remembered because they are stored in long-term memory. This is called the primacy effect. Words from the end of a list are remembered because they are stored in short-term memory, and this is known as the recency effect. This also demonstrates the existence of two separate stores. There are also a large number of research studies, some of which we've just looked at, which provide evidence for the different characteristics of sensory memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. One weakness of the model is that it can be seen as being too simplistic, because it assumes that there is just one single short-term memory and one single type of long-term memory. Later research by Badley and Hitch showed that there are different memory processes in operation in the short-term memory. Also, the multi-store model relies too much on the role of rehearsal in transferring information from short-term to long-term memory. This doesn't account for information that we remember without having to rehearse it, such as flashbulb memories. Lastly, much of the supporting evidence for the multi-store model comes from lab experiments, which lack ecological validity. Tasks such as having to remember nonsense trigrams have very little bearing on everyday memory, and so the results from these studies cannot really be generalised. <laughs>